good. I appreciate it. Give us one quick word with you. Now, first of all, I think you're the greatest American actor living today. Is this a movie the Academy will take seriously and give you an Oscar for? Wow, you're really pushing it there, buddy. <laughs> Marvel.com. I'm a company man. Greetings, my slurpy friends. See what I did there? Oh, Jennifer Anderson with that straw in her mouth. Oh, that gives me palpitations. And speaking of which, my box set, my Blu-ray box set of Friends arrived from CEX yesterday. I paid 20 UK pounds. On Amazon, this thing retails for 60. And guess what? My 20 pound version was in mint condition. But of course, we are here to talk about not friends, but about this. This particular video I made, and look for the timestamp, ladies and gentlemen, nine months ago. And this was a video short about Stephen Dorff attacking the MCU. And interestingly enough, folks, this is what I said in the video nine months ago. The following program contains naughty bits. But before each naughty bit comes on the screen, you'll hear this warning sound. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna 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 come. happening with that pg-13 blade it's rather fun reacting to myself because i can't copyright myself <laughs> oh that's right it's, it's hardly getting off the ground isn't it mahershala ali i believe strong armed his way into that role he, he did was like yo kevin mofo are you gonna give me the title roller blade or what and Kevin Feige's like, uh, yeah, I guess we don't have to audition any actors then. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mahershala Ali. And ever since then, it's been in production hell. I suspect the Indian director who was signed on to direct the film and then left because of creative differences probably didn't want to align with the idea that perhaps a female Blade, maybe Blade's daughter, actually takes over the proceedings because Marvel now wants to make women the most strongest and bestest ever because you can't even have a black man as your lead titular character slaying vampires, smashing people in the ghoulies. Nope, you can't have that. And why on earth would a PG-13 Blade even work today? Come on. And by the way, how is that Blade reboot going? <laughs> From where I'm sitting, absolutely nowhere, far off into the abysmal abyss. In fact, on Variety's homepage right here, one person who calls themselves GMK2311 said, one person familiar with the script permutations of the Blade reboot says, the story at one point mighty morphed into not a Power Ranger, but a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. Blade, as played by Mahershala Ali, would be relegated to the fourth lead in his own film. That's what woke means. That's a very good example of woke, of you wanting to power women. That's great. Why call it Blade instead of Tor the Lady Vamps? By the way, Vamps, with a cover by Brian Bolland, is a damn good comic series. This is what you'll get, and you'll like it. That's woke, bro. I wouldn't go see that movie. I'd re-rent the originals and be done. At this point, Blade 3 is like fucking Shakespeare compared to what this proposed reboot is going to be. Courtney B reveals, and that movie doesn't exist. It was just a script that got quickly tossed by the wayside, and his moron called Darius Ricks. Interestingly, on top of everything else, this is what alarmed you? You anti-woke people are hilarious. Yeah, in my world, if I read that, and that's the film I'm going to see, I could just imagine a bunch of very diverse women squabbling over a dinner table while poor Blade is sat in a corner thinking to himself, why the fuck am I even in this scene? Let alone this movie. 
<laughs> you want to call help? <laughs> Well, of course, ladies and gentlemen, hindsight is a beautiful thing. And yours truly is going to bring you his opinions about what's been happening, which was uncovered by Variety magazine, or should I say the website yesterday. But of course, Marvel is in an upheaval, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the release of The Marvels with Brie Larson looking absolutely like she doesn't want to be part of this sequel at all. Nia DaCosta, the film's woke director, and SJW apparently left the film while it was in pre-production to work on Tessa Thompson's new movie, Hedda. What the Hedda? What the fuck is that film going to be? Is that Hedda Gabler by chance? That was written by Ibsen? Am I mistaken? Uh, is Tessa Thompson playing a race swapped version of that character, Hedda Gabler? Oh, please let that be the case. <laughs> oh, yes, but uh, everybody is reeling from the disappointments, the woke disappointments from the MCU from 2020 onward. It doesn't seem to stop, does it? There's been lots of lows, not many highs. I think the only high we can talk about is Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which I still have not seen yet but i'm going to at some point i've heard it's pretty good um a bit divisive but people have said overall given that it's james gunn the same james gunn who oh, more than 10 years ago um decided to put up some unfavorable tweets that got him fired from marvel then he went over to dc and warner brothers and marvel like the the little cuck hounds that they are begged and pleaded for james to come back and do one more film for them one more film which made over 800 million dollars at the box office worldwide and funny enough they just could not replicate that success with the other woke brand of complete garbage that seems to be permeating the landscape right now yeah people were very quick to attack martin scorsese and steven spielberg for their concerns that the mcu films are just dominating the movie landscape making you forget about the classics that came before them i'm talking about the french connection star wars the conversation apocalypse now the godfather part one and two uh, this past september a group of marvel creatives including studio chief kevin feige assembled in palm springs for the studio's annual retreat <laughs> the grooming retreat most years the vibe would have been confident even cocky given how the premier superhero brand owned by disney since 2009 that's another bone of contention i had actually has remade the entertainment business in its image but of course jonathan majors you know he was kang kang the conqueror yeah he was going to be the big bad of the mcu For you jonathan they love you they love you it's football you're playing a villain in this you yeah. like playing a bad guy, or do you even see Kane as a bad guy? He is. He is. And he is, too. That's what he people is. don't know. That our greatest instinct is sympathy as human beings. And I think that's true about the villain. You know what I mean? The greatest villains have a great deal of sympathy. We need the antagonizers. We need the uh, deviants. You know, that's what shakes stuff up. Shakes stuff up. Uh-oh. I think I heard a toilet flush. <laughs> Maybe somebody... Lost the turtle. <laughs> well, Mr. Majors, whatever the verdict, whether you're guilty or innocent, your skid mark has left an impenetrable stain on the MCU. So good luck getting him recast or maybe scrapping him all together and starting from scratch again with a brand new villain. I would have said Galactus would have been your guy to go to, but no, I guess Galactus is too based and we can't have another angry white man. <laughs> Of course, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have now? Desperation from Marvel. Apparently, the rumor has it is that Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson have been asked or maybe asked to go back and revive their roles. At this point, I'll maybe say resuscitate their roles of Miss Natasha Romanov and Tony Stark, Iron Man, Black Widow, respectively, for one last hurrah. Uh, for an Avengers movie, because yes, in the Marvels trailer, what do they show? Not the actual trailer for the Marvels, but they're taking you back to 
Endgame to Infinity War, where Marvel was great, and it's the worst kind of publicity you can give to a movie that nobody gives three shits to the wind about. Of course, this rumor about Robert Downey Jr. has been covered by Bounding Into Comics as well, where Tatiana Siegel at Variety claimed, sources say there have been talks to bring back the original gang for an Avengers movie. Uh, of course, the bone of contention right here is the $25 million fee that Danny Jr. picked up for Iron Man 3, which is actually true because when he totaled up uh, that and Iron Man 2, he got a total of $50 million. But then subsequently, his base rate went up to $75 million per Marvel movie. So I think the $25 million is actually inaccurate. If he were to come back, he's coming back for more chicken change, man. He's not coming back for $25 million. But the question I've got is, is Robert Downey Jr. still going to be a draw for the fans? I know the Marvel Stan Lee's out there will be definitely gagging at the mouth for more RDJ as Iron Man, but are you seriously going to try and recreate the magic from the 2008 movie? The same movie that when they were celebrating the success of it, <laughs> John Favreau was outside a Hooters restaurant. Hooters for crying out loud. My favorite pastime, not only in my home, but when I go to America, I like to feast on some buns and some beers and some burgers and get my picture taken with some beautiful waitresses out there. But you can't, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can't have that now. It's too toxic in line with male masculinity and celebrating the female form as it ought to be celebrated. But no, in fact, I would even go as far as to say that the conclusion of this article is pretty hilarious because one person here compared Kevin Feige to Babe Ruth. He's the Babe Ruth of movie producers, which I think is a bit of an overstatement. Babe Ruth, if you don't know, probably considered the greatest baseball player of all time, scored 54 runs in 1920, and then topped it off in 1921 by scoring 59 more home runs. Kevin Feige's only made 22 very successful MCU movies. So how can you compare Kevin Feige to Babe Ruth? Although mind you, with the way Kevin Feige's gaining weight at the moment, he might soon get there. So ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video today, regarding the <laughs> not even the rise more like the fall the disintegration of the mcu kevin feige and disney make sure you leave a like below make sure you subscribe because i'm not here to beg for followers and everything else i think those days might be past me by now but i still enjoy youtube I'm still monetized for the time being, but I'm getting so increasingly fed up of all the ESG nonsense out there. Every time I turn on a TV advert, I'm greeted with diversity. When I'm going on YouTube and looking at a video, I'm greeted by yet more overblown diversity. I sit back, I roll my eyes, and I gaze at my movie collection in my living room and can just think to myself, you know what? I haven't been to the cinema for many, many years. Well, actually I lie for many, many months. And if I can look at the physical media on my wall, I've got the luxury of picking what I want, watch it when I want, and don't have to worry about being offended by anything in those episodes or in that film. So ladies and gentlemen, if you were me, and if I were you, you better catch me on the next video.